If you're listening to this on YouTube, this episode is one week delayed. Up-to-date tech show but friendly episodes are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Tech Show But Friendly. This is your host, Anton, and this is the podcast of Hardware Sugar. Starting things off with general internet news. Facebook recently published its Twitter clone, Threads. And unlike some of the other Facebook clones, Facebook is infamous for basically just copying anything (laughs) that is popular online. So when Clubhouse was a big thing, they also had a Clubhouse clone. Features of Snapchat... They've emulated into Instagram. So Facebook is not big on creativity, but they do have a massive platform and an established user base in place. So with Twitter going down the tubes after the Elon Musk acquisition, there have been a bunch of post-Twitter services, threads being the latest one. But of course, it's from Facebook and it has reached over 100 million users in just five days. And that's not even counting the EU. Because the EU has some privacy concerns, so Facebook can't launch threads yet there. But 100 million in less than five days is a staggering amount. You might have seen some of your favorite creators joining threads and then posting about it. We have not. Because to be honest, I um, wasn't a big Twitter user. I didn't even have my own Twitter account. Hardware Sugar didn't have one. Although we might have to do it for threads. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. Just managing the existing social media channels already takes up a lot of time. So I don't know if we have time and energy and effort because we do try to have distinctive content. What we post on Facebook is different from what we post on Instagram. We just don't put our YouTube videos onto our Facebook page. So we really try to differentiate the content based on the people who watch us or read our content on the different channels. So I don't know exactly how Threads would be able to differentiate itself, at least for us. But definitely an interesting time for Facebook and for its founder, Mark Zuckerberg, who has gotten into a passive-aggressive spat. Or should I say, to be fair, he didn't start it. (laughs) Apparently, Elon Musk started it, tweeting that because prior to Threads being launched, Elon had already raised some beef with Mark and challenging Mark to a fight, like a literal (laughs) physical fight. Zuckerberg actually is a martial arts champion. I forget which particular sport he focuses on, but he has won several tournaments. Elon is older, is not as well-versed in martial arts. So most pundits have it as Mark winning within, you know, by a mile. But so Elon Musk came out with this bizarre tweet challenging Mark Zuckerberg to a fight. Zuckerberg quickly agreed. It hasn't really progressed from basically slapping each other online. Although there was a report that Rome or Italy was offering up the Colosseum as the venue for the fight. Originally, it was supposed to be Vegas. And then Elon tweeted something about the Colosseum, which the city of Rome has denied that they actually offered it to him. I think Elon has also challenged Zuckerberg on threads itself. Like... He had some statement that competition is okay, but copying or cheating rather is not implying that he might sue Facebook for copying Twitter. Facebook responded by saying that there were no former Twitter engineers who worked on threads. So kind of a bizarre series of events between these two tech giants. Some see it as frivolous, but I mean, to be honest, that would be like the match of the century. Never mind Pacquiao Mayweather. I mean, these are two super rich white guys going at it because they have ego. I mean, that that's all that is, basically. Although I did read an interesting report that the beef goes way back. A couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, I think, Facebook was set to launch a satellite to focus on internet in Africa. The satellite was supposed to help provide internet access to Africa and it was supposed to, or it did go, it was loaded onto a SpaceX rocket, I think one of the Falcon rockets, which unfortunately blew up. (laughs) So Mark Zuckerberg at the time posted on Facebook that he was saddened by the loss of the bird, the loss of the satellite, and it was such a loss to the people in Africa. And apparently internally in SpaceX, which is also owned by Elon, that didn't go down very well. I mean, going public and kind of having this pa palungkot o effect na, oh, you know, that satellite was meant to service Africa and things like that. Although, you know, so much has happened since then. I really 
no one really knows what's going on in the mind of Elon Musk. Supposedly, the root of their beef may stem from the loss of that satellite. Moving on to more big company news, Microsoft has gotten the go-ahead to buy Activision Blizzard. So this deal was announced a long time ago, but there were concerns about antitrust or monopoly issues. In fact, the purchase was already blocked in the UK, again, on by the country's competition commission. A lot of countries now, including our own, have competition commissions which examine proposed deals. And if they find that there's a large risk of a monopoly coming into place or anti-competitive practices, then they will block the deal. In the States, the agency in charge of antitrust is the FTC, and they do have an ongoing case against this acquisition. But they filed in court an action for a preliminary injunction, asking the court to bar or prohibit Microsoft from continuing with the purchase. Now, the court, I believe it's a district court in California, has come out and ruled in favor of Microsoft, saying that it will not be issuing the preliminary injunction, and Microsoft is free to go forward with the purchase of Activision Blizzard. And so with the decision of the California court, and so with the decision of the court, the regulator now in the UK has had to do an about phase and said that, okay, well, we're willing to approve the deal with certain conditions, which is normal in this kind of approval of big companies buying other companies. Usually there are conditions that need to be met. Just I find it kind of funny that initially the position was, heck no. But then when some, just some court, it's not even, you know, it's not a court of appeals, not the Supreme Court of the state. It's just some court in the state says that I'm not even giving approval to the actual sale. I'm just saying that I can't or I will not bar Microsoft from buying Activision Blizzard. So I won't issue the preliminary injunction. Suddenly the regulator in the UK is like, okay, wait, well, I think we can make it work. Because the EU has already signed off, the greater EU has already signed off on the purchase by Microsoft. So the concerns are, of course, Activision Blizzard is a humongous publisher and they do publish on multi-platform. So there's Xbox, PS, Nintendo, and PC. But if Microsoft now owns it, would that mean that they wouldn't publish the Activision Blizzard games on PlayStation? Which is a big deal, let's say, for Call of Duty. The Modern Warfare franchise is one of the tentpole franchises for PlayStation. So for at least the US antitrust case, that's where the bulk of the arguments came from. Note that the FTC is still pursuing its case against Microsoft, against the deal. All this says is that the court will not issue a preliminary injunction against it and that the sale or the purchase, depending on your point of view, can go forward. Now, whether that will be declared as void in the future, whether it will be reversed, that could still happen. But for now, it's looking very positive for the eventual acquisition. Whether that's good for your favorite franchise or not, whether it's Overwatch, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, or heck, Warcraft in general, Call of Duty. I mean, you know, Activision Blizzard has so many well-known franchises. Whether that's good for your franchise, only time will tell. Topping out the big company news, there was a rumor this week that EVGA was closing shop that... Its employees in Taiwan were not reporting to work and some of their high-profile employees from the GPU division because they did stop manufacturing GPUs last year that these high-profile employees were no longer coming into work. But EVGA has denied the report, although there wasn't any clear rebuttal. Like, no, no, we're very much in business and in fact, here are some new products. And so a lot of people have been wondering, what EVGA has been up to, a well-respected brand, both for GPUs and for PSUs, they've been wondering what EVGA has been up to. It will be recalled. And EVGA exited the GPU market because basically they were tired of being treated like crap by NVIDIA. Apparently, you know, NVIDIA doesn't bother to coordinate with its board partners. The returns, the margins are quite miserable. And, you know, everybody thinks that, oh, GPUs, you must be making bank if you make a GPU. If you're anywhere along the GPU production or distribution pipeline, then you must be making money. But EVGA, a third-party provider or manufacturer, an AIB of NVIDIA cards, was very clear that, no, no, our margins were super small. Just like our retail margins for our GPUs. So it's easy to claim they're overpriced, but really, guys, if you take a look at the money out that we have to do and then money in, the margins are teeny tiny. Especially because the retailer is the last one. Um, 
the higher up the chain you go, the higher the margins you usually have. The highest margin, of course, probably being NVIDIA's. But like at the retailer level, the margins are just tiny. So that's it for this week. To be honest, I've been thinking of mixing up the format a little. Like instead of this being a weekly show, I would do it twice monthly. So every other week. And then the remaining two weeks, we would be doing another show. But I'm still kind of thinking about it a little on the fence. It would talk more about the internet in general. Sort of like internet culture rather than more specifically focused on tech news. But we'll have to see how it goes and mulling it over so far. That said, if you enjoy or dislike this podcast, please do let me know in the comments so I can kind of steer the boat towards a direction that is interesting and relevant for our viewers. If you're listening to this on the Friday that it came out, please do check out our new video dropping later this afternoon on the 4060. And the weird discrepancy between how tech YouTubers described it versus print media tech journalists described it. It's really kind of interesting the the divide. Like one is super negative, the other one is cautiously positive about it. And yet they're talking about the same card. We're talking about the same space. You know, you're gonna use it for games. All of them are experts, whether you're from the print media or from the or from the tech YouTuber space. Doing research for that video, I did find it interesting that the tech YouTubers focus on a lot of details, which I think are not really important for that card. I mean, they tested it for 4K gaming. Expecting 4K gaming from a 4060 SRP $300 is not realistic. So I don't even know why they those details in it's well sorry scratch that i mean it does make a good headline oh i got only 10 fps or whatever from this game using this card but then you just jump into the details and it's like well it's 10 fps because you were trying to run it at 4k and who runs a 4060 at 4k a lot of the details were there to make a point that was an unfair point you know it's like you're asking a ferrari it's like you're asking a Kia Pride, if you guys remember the Kia Pride back in the day, to race a Ferrari. Those are just like two different classifications of cars. Just like a $300 4060 is better served at 1080p, which it's really quite good at, and even decent at 2K. So do check out that video when it drops later this afternoon. If you're listening to this episode not on the Friday that it came out, well, you can still catch that episode anyway. It's up on our YouTube now. Thanks for lending me your ear. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent table management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.